Hi, my name is Amanda Stefanich and I'm here today to talk to you about Paddock Paradise, a track system with rotational grazing. If you look at the picture on your screen, you will see that the exterior fence here would be a normal pasture. By adding the interior fence, you turn it into a Paddock Paradise or a track system. So stabling is more of a human thing than a horse thing. That was a quote that I came across that I really liked, and it's true. So we started stabling or stalling, as most people know it, um, basically to convenience humans, not for the horse's benefit. So Ramsey II, all the way back in 1304 BC, did it for breeding purposes so that he could keep his breeding stock separated and he could house them that way. And then we travel down to the Middle Ages, which is the 5th through the 15th centuries, and we did it for defense purposes. And the defense purposes was that we would have our horses on hand whenever we wanted them to defend our property, defend our houses, um, castles, things like that. Then we look at the Renaissance and between the, uh, around the 16th century and onward, and that's pretty much what we have now, and it's for housing the animals and, and during the Renaissance really up into the Victorian period we had elaborate houses going into effect for these um, for the horses and a lot of times they matched the home of the the owner and this was really just to show off the horse um, and also to show off the money of the owner so this guy Jamie Jackson he um, spent a lot of time in the Great Basin with wild horses Mustangs and observed them from 1982 until 1986. And as he observed them, he saw that this uh, track here on the left is what they did. It was their natural track system, how they, the, the land that they, they covered, the ways that they would go. They always took the same route. They would never just go east, west, north, south randomly. They always took the same route. And there were certain things that they avoided and there were certain things that they went to. And a lot of times they were not on grassland. So we can take this track system right here, which is their preferred pattern. And we take it over to this, what's on the right. And that is a paddock paradise that someone has created at their home. Um, and it resembles what they would do in, in nature. And then here you have uh, Jamie Jackson at the top in his, at his original home-based paddock paradise with two of his horses at a feeding station. So reasons for a paddock paradise. There are many reasons for a paddock paradise. Number one is to more accurately resemble the original natural habitat for horses. And then number two, it helps with the uh, weight management and healthy hopes. And you can also see that it helps with you know, there's no excess warm up exercising before riding because they're constantly in movement. And it's, it does help with weight management and diet because they're not standing on a green, lush green pasture all day long. But there are lots of reasons for it. In the track system, there is a lot of management. And the number one management that there's going to be is track management. For that, you have to manage the manure, fence, substrate, enrichment, and plants. And we'll step to manure. So manure, you have to ask yourself, am I going to compost it or am I going to drag it? As uh, Dr. Hancock said in his lecture, if you let it stay there and you drag it, it adds nutrients back into the soil, back into the earth, which helps retain the water, which leads to less runoff. And you can see this is actually my paddock system. And there are this little debris right there is actually from tunneling dung beetles that you can see in this picture. What they're doing underneath, they're bringing that nutrients back down into the soil. And as Miss Melanie Wilson said in her, her presentation, um, if, if we're going to have manure on pastures or paddock areas, we need to make sure that we have a nutrient management uh, to make sure the nitrogen levels and phosphorus levels are okay in the soil and that we have maybe a buffer area so that the runoff is limited to streams or waterways. Also, we have fencing management. This is actually my fencing system. I have the exterior fence here is um, post and board like Dr. Turner said in, in her lecture. Um, then that 
you are actually liable. If your horse escapes its enclosure and causes an accident, you are liable. So you want to make sure there's a sturdy fence on the outside. It's hard to see here, but this is actually the corner of a three-wire poly braid, um, poly rope actually, poly rope electric system. And here is my energizer. So as once again, Dr. Hancock gave a lecture about uh, electric fencing and the leakage. So you have to make sure you go around to the bottom of all the wires, really the tops too, and make sure that there's no foliage connect uh, contacting them. And you should have one mile of fence per one joule. Then we have substrate. So managing the substrate is very important. These uh, four pictures here show different types of managing substrates. If you do not manage it, you get a muddy mess. Right here, the top left picture is just the muddy mess. But you can add different substrates for erosion control and runoff. Then there was a Greek cavalier commander from the 4th century BC who said, naturally sound hooves get spoiled in most stalls and hooves should be toughened by putting a cobblestone area in their paddock, which is basically what is done in a paddock paradise situation. There's gonna be different areas of the, pa of the track system that has different substrates to toughen the hoof naturally. We also have enrichments in the track system. On the top, we have wood laid down for, um, to make them step their legs up higher to increase exercise of their legs. And at the bottom, we have just a fun pool of water. So if it's hot, they can get in and play or they could just play in it. Um, as Dr. Turner said in her lecture about reducing boredom, you really wanna make sure they have something to do. They're very smart animals. And if you don't, if you leave them to be bored, they're going to come up with their own things to do, like cribbing. Um, so reduce boredom and reduce the vices that come with the boredom. Plants. So you want to make sure that the plants that are inside your paddock paradise or your track system are not toxic. This picture right here is actually showing a fern um, that is toxic. So as Dr. Turner said, you want to identify and remove toxic plants. Dr. Whitley in her lecture said that horses are highly selective and like flat land. So while it's not imperative that every poisonous plant is removed, excuse me, every toxic plant is removed because the horses will most likely not mess with them. You do want to know what's in there. You want to have an idea of what's in there. So then there's diet. There's diet. And on the diet, you have forage, grain, supplements, and water. Forage, number one. So you want to make sure your forage is high quality. You want to make sure it's 1% minimum to 2% of the body weight of your horse. And the way that you can tell if your horse is getting an adequate amount of forage is their body condition score. So on mine, these three are my uh, paddock system, and I have Timothy and Perennial Peanut. And the way that you keep them moving down the track is to uh, put which haze they like in different areas to keep them moving. So he really prefers the perennial peanut. Um, and if you see right here, as um, Dr. Jennifer Tucker was saying that you needed a um, hay could be up to a 70% loss. So I have a hay barn here and that helps with um, the loss. And it is away from trees and anything that would attract lightning. You don't want to start a fire. On my system, there are three different feeding stations with two feeding posts per station. Grain. So this is my horse, Joe. Um, he is given grain. It is not his number one source of nutrition. He is uh, 18 years old. He has a Seminole Senior Mix. And it is only half a scoop uh, per feeding. He gets fed twice a day. And really, um, it's for his enjoyment. He doesn't need it. It's for his enjoyment. And it's also a way to give medication or supplements. So he receives MSN, which is a granule supplement and a horse cookie or hoof cookie. Um, but if he were to need medication, if I give him a small amount of grain every day that he's used to having and likes, um, 
then it's easy to just add the, the medication on top of it or the supplements like the MSN on top of it. And um, he likes it. They look for horses love food. So supplements. Um, and the, the, we are placing salt and mineral blocks as deliberately a distance away to make them walk even more. So what, what, what this is saying is you don't want to put everything in the same area because you want them to have to walk for it. And not only that, you want them to have to find it because in the wild, they actually do lick salt, um, but they, it's on the salt flats of the Great Basin and they, they find it under, under things. Um, so even though this is, this is my salt block, it's not out in the open, but it's not as hidden as it could possibly be. Um, but there should be a trace mineral block out there as well. And, um, yeah. Drinking water. So as Dr. Calloway said in his lecture, it is the most essential nutrient and they need it clean, not Clorox clean, but they need it clean full. You don't want feces in there. You don't want leaves and branches in there. Um, now you the, here on the left is a picture of horses in water. It's probably not the most ideal drinking situation because they're going to be, like I said, there's going to be feces in there. There's going to be debris in there, there's hair in there. Um, yeah. So you want to, you want to decide which path you're going and then try to keep it as clean as possible. You might want to put a little uh, bridge in there so they can only come in so far. Then we have, um, this is a post, so you want to decide if, if you're going to have a post watering system or a trough watering system and what works best for you. This is mine. I have a trough. Um, it's in the shade, so the algae doesn't grow in it. And you want to make sure there's always water available. And as Dr. Turner said in her lecture, um, impaction colic can almost be off the table if there's enough water available. So it's very, very, very important. Disadvantages, because everything is not perfect. Um, you you just need to, what do you have already is kind of where you need to go. Is What, what do you have already? What are you willing to do? How much money are you willing to spend? Fencing is expensive, and that is it's a huge debt to go into is, is fencing for the paddock paradise system. Um, maintenance of the track is a lot. It is hugely labor intensive. Um, some people who are not used to the system believe that it is, kind of a lazy man's way of managing horses, but it is hugely labor intensive. You have to have um, automated vehicles or, you know, like a four wheeler or a tractor to, or a side by side to be able to adequately manage the track with the hay and, and the manure. Um, the, they're all together all day long. So it, it's difficult to, to split up horses, um, no shoes. You cannot have shoes on a track system because of the hay nets. They could get stuck in there. It could be bad. Um, also, visual checks on herds are easier in a paddock situation instead of a paddock paradise situation because it's not a big open field. This picture down here, uh, my horse is in there. It's me standing on the track looking for him, and you can actually see he's right here, but you wouldn't know that just off the bat. So. All right, so that wraps it all up. And then here are some further reading or some references. So um, yeah, it's it's just it's a it's a neat way to manage horses. Thanks.